Hi, everyone. I hear too much echo with this microphone, so bear with me. So I want to invite here with me Codrina, Ariel, and Matias, who I lost him. I don't Okay, here, here he is. So this is not a common thing in FOSS. Uh, we usually don't do panels, but I really was interested to have more than one opinion about, about this topic. So, okay, perfect. Thank you. Welcome. All right. So uh, let me introduce you how we will be doing this. Uh, so how everything started is that I have been attending different events, community-driven and also more industry-driven. And it has been still interesting to see how in 2024, still people think that open source is for students who cannot afford the license our companies which they are lacking of funding or lacking of uh, investment and they need to go also open source. So how we're communicating with the public is important. So that's why I brought here three amazing people uh, for this panel. So here they are, Codrina from Terra Signa, Ariel Antieni from Can Territory, and Matias Kuhn from OpenGIS. So we're going to be doing this in this uh, way. It will be uh, every person in the panel will introduce themselves and the company they represent for three minutes. And then uh, we're going to be having three questions, uh, three minutes each person will need to answer. And then at the end, we're going to be having also questions. So at the end, we can participate all together, okay? Thank you. And then I will start with uh, you, Codrina. So let me go back uh, and then I will give you this mic or maybe we just... The one. Thank you. Um, since I've just spoken, <laughs> I'm not going to insist too much, but this is a bit of another uh, hat for me because at Terra Signa, I also work in the, um, uh, with uh, insurance and reinsurance with respect to uh, offering services that are based on earth observation data processing and uh, interpretation. So my answers today here will be more from that, uh, from that perspective. Those awesome. are my three. Okay. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for me and for invitation. Uh, I'm preparing some lines to read me. My name is Ariel Antini. I'm having over to the case of experience in geospatial technology in public sector and board member and chair. Uh, chair of uh, UN committee and CEO of Can Territory IT. Uh, in a specific, Can Territory IT specialist in providing innovation geospatial technology solution, so support sustainability development and decision maker. Um, principal with particular experience in digital twin, QGIS uh, plugin and satellite data process with GRAS uh, his um, or provider help public and private sector manager trade territory more efficient by designer for implementation HDI um, in the working for other clients, for example, World Bank, UN, and other country and government in Latin America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Matthias. Um, I'm Matthias Kuhn. I'm working for OpenGIS.ch. I think we are mostly known around here for uh, QField and QField Cloud, um, which are um, data collection tools, um, but basically I've been uh, developing uh, QGIS as a core developer for the past I don't know, 12, 13 years, something like that, um, quite actively. And um, with that, I uh, also participated in quite a, a couple of uh, low-level um, things in there and just trying to push the whole um, ecosystem further. And um, that also comes with a couple of challenges, uh, I must say. And um, I was actually asked by Miriam to, to kind of uh, maybe also dive a bit into, in, into the business model uh, that, that you can put behind, behind open source because basically that's also one of the questions the, the main questions behind this be panel, I guess. <laughs> oh, that would be the first question, yeah. so I'm not going <laughs> to dive into that too much. Yeah, but um, basically, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing uh, consulting. Um, we're doing a lot of development, custom development on, like, well, custom development for integrating QGIS, QField, and other open source products into um, 
systems, infrastructures, but also um, developing the tools themselves and really trying to contribute as much as possible um, to open source uh, software with, with uh, I think, quite a good track record on that area. Thank you. Uh, let's give the mic back to Corina and let's go to the first question. So the first question is, each of you has been big players in the community for several years and also each of the companies you are working on right now, they are also users, contributors of open source and also you are doing business with private and public sector. So the question is, what has worked and also uh, if you can share also kind of the business model, the company is doing that would be also great to more people is aware about how it's done. Um, that's a good question. Uh, so firstly, I should probably have mentioned at the beginning that uh, the company that I work for, TerraSigna, is a company with quite a long tradition in earth observation data processing. We also have extensive, extensive experience in developing, implementing exploitation platforms for geospatial data. So from that, you can gather the fact that we are not necessarily selling software per se. Let's say what we're selling is, um, is a service. Um, and our projects and what we're trying to develop within the, uh, the bigger world is based on, on that. Um, so that, that was probably what I should have uh, mentioned at the beginning. Uh, with respect to uh, what I want to see the question again. Also here uh, is the question. Uh, what has worked? <laughs> well... <laughs> Um, yeah, what has worked uh, for you and your company to be successful in doing business in the public and private sectors? So uh, what I want to say is that at least my experience in the company where I work, uh, people that are part of the open source paradigm have a certain way of working and collaborating and building uh, services, software and so on and so forth in a way that I believe can be key uh, in obtaining success, I think, as a, as a company. Uh, yeah, that I would, uh, that I would like to, to stress. Okay, thank you, Corinne. Uh, Ariel, same question. Uh, what has worked uh, for Can Territory to be able to win these deals? You have three minutes maximum. Yeah. <laughs> yes. In English, I, it's, it's, I'm it's Spanish speaking and he's from Argentina, so we know <laughs> why I'm doing this comment. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, no, in English is. Okay, no, no, go. Uh, Frisal, uh, I'm sorry, my, my English uh, is so so. Precise what does working is being able to offer solution based in open source, which simplify the possibility of giving the client what they really need. Not a friend or standardized solution, but a personalized solution where the result obtains different development at beginning corporate into the solution uh, original use. I think the great advance and a specific or business model is the ability to mix different open source solutions to generate one simple solution for the client so that the client feel that the platform integrates with their life and their process. Great, thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Matthias, then I'll same take question. Over here. Yes. Um, what has worked for us is, um, I think it's, it's based on a couple of different things. Um, but basically, our clients, very often, they, they don't directly look for, I don't know, like low level uh, open source solution. That's not their main requirement, right? They have, they have their, their problems, they have, I don't know, some forestry to do, they have some, some uh, network management to do, they have, they, have, they really they have very specific needs that they need to solve. And I think 
what we can offer to them is basically that, that we can build on building blocks of open source building blocks that have been developed in many, many projects worldwide and, and, and that can provide a solid base to customarily assemble a specific product for the needs of a client. And I think that's, that's one of the, the key reasons for someone to, to, to invest into open source is, uh, well, certainly there are some who invest into open source, but more often than not, it's like someone needs to solve a problem and what we can bring is a solution based on open source and people are normally aware that they need to pay for that much more than uh, directly investing into open source. But on the other hand, um, this also means um, that, that we base we, we, we found our, our, our work on a lot of bases that comes from open source. We have some developers internally that uh, like QGIS mostly uh, that, that we work with um, that do work there. We try also to have a, a bit of uh, company time actually reinvested into, um, into that. But on the other hand, we also try to build a, a network um, with other people who are like I'd say like lower in the stack. So, so you see like QGIS is, is for instance, is a software that everybody sees, everybody knows the names, but there is so much below that is actually used to make QGIS work. And we, it's important for us to be, to be also stable on, on, on GDAL, on GEOS, on, uh, I don't know, like many, many libraries. And so we try to have a network uh, that, that allows us to, whenever there is something that we can actually get really good people and normally we approach them directly with uh, um, hey can you make us an offer rather than uh, can you fix that problem for us um, attitude which I think uh, after all helps them make for a living as well and keeps a uh, sustainable open source ecosystem. Thank you Matthias. La let's give the microphone to Ariel. He's going to start uh, with this question right here. So uh, the second question, let me move this also. Uh, is more related about what can territory has been doing. I mean, can territory has been also in the market for at least two years. You have been doing press with United Nations, with World Bank, with different governments in Mexico City, in Argentina. So you you have made your way to be able to reach all these big organizations. So what has been the main challenges to reaching where you are today, and making understand? the opportunities that people has by using a company really committed to open source? Okay. Uh, and good question. <laughs> Especially the change where meeting manager, particularly in the government, and system managers who did have to confidential or did not uh, see the security and did not see open source as a commercial solution. Where we can provide their support and delivery a um, robust and stable solution. The owner aligns what's understand with the were providing something to call to download and what the addition value on the solution was instead of downloading the information available on the web. And free chains this is regional issue. Regional issue, this different quality on understand we begin is different regional. Quality cloud vary on the B lower or hinder. I'll also on the financing aspect of the cost that have a that uh, of infrastructure, in, especially in the Latin America, the servers is necessary, is need for deploying infrastructure for more creative solution <laughs> for good uh, deployment in, especially in government. Uh, I know possibly for the use uh, public cloud, for example, AWS, uh, GCP, for example. Okay. This side. <laughs> okay. Uh, same question, Matthias. Uh, What's the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> wait. Uh, open uh, GIS. No worries. I mean, I can, I can explain again. Open GIS has been also in the market, I mean, for 
several years because you start also kind of contributing in GIS and you saw how building services on top, you were able to also build uh, something really unique for different governments and different organizations. So what has been the main challenges that the company has faced to reach where you are today mm -hmm. and how you have convinced the people who doesn't know what open source to see the opportunities to be working with a company committed to open source? I think um, I was quite in a, or we were in a quite good position because uh, I come from Switzerland and I realized that many um, in the public sectors had all, already realized a couple of years back um, that open source is a good alternative. So uh, basically we have cantons which are like provinces, whatever, and like a couple of them had already done the switch to QGIS, open source, whatever based systems. Uh, which was for us a really good, um, really good head start, I would say. Uh, still, uh, like there's a lot of proprietary software uh, everywhere, but like if you if you have um, already a good community, also in um, for us the client side of things, um, that is that is definitely something. We somehow challenge are challenged sometimes are challenged by the fact that um, people come with expectations that open source is free and that we are responsible for its quality and that they can basically just throw bucks at us and they will be fixed for charity or so. So basically that needs a lot of um, convincing and talking to people, maybe sometimes just saying plain no. Um, and being bold about that, also being uh, proud to say that you, it's your time in the end that you invest. I mean, I, I, I also do a share fair, a fair share of uh, volunteer work, but on the other hand, um, like at some point, you need to be able to invoice the hours. And um, like there are some some um, possibilities, like building a user group around something or so that that can. Um, to some degree, um, deliver uh, a base, a funding base to work on. Um, but there is also another possibility, like uh, we, we, we uh, do some, uh, some uh, support and maintenance contracts. And we, you, you can buy like five days for, from us, for instance. And if you don't use them by the end of the year, what we do is instead of uh, go and drive and buy a Lamborghini, I'm not sure you can do that with five days anyway, <laughs> but uh, instead of uh, going to the Bahamas and, uh, and sip uh, Caipirinhas, we just reinvest the time that we save there into uh, yeah, open source work. So tr trying to uh, also find out what clients need and what they are able to pay for and then reinvest that in other, um, in other ways into open source. Colina, same with the Rasigna. I think you have been uh, doing an amazing job uh, closing deals with ESA, uh, supporting different organizations, different projects, and also, I mean, still, I mean, in the core of the Rasigna is uh, this open source that everybody is aware, I mean, when higher services from the company. So what have been the main challenges? I think actually that's the problem, that everybody is aware that it's an open source company. And I'm answering now from the perspective of someone that's been working with people from different fields. So as I was mentioning, from the insurance and reinsurance sector, they don't care if it's open source or proprietary. They don't even need to know that. They need to know if it answers their requirements, period. The idea that uh, the knowledge that the software uh, on which your services are based is open source, that should be somewhere, you know, like way back for the technic technical people to look at. And I think from my perspective, now looking back at, at our efforts, was that talking about the fact that we're using state-of-the-art open source for our exploitation platform did not necessarily bring a plus for us because mm -hmm. it brought, usually it brings a new term to that year. The word open, they don't really like, especially if, again, I'm not talking about people that are working in the, you know, that are coders, that are selling, developing and selling software and so on. These are people that have completely different activities during the day. I mean, for them, it's just a tool. The tool has to respond to their requirements. They don't care what kind of license it is. They don't even care where it runs. If it runs in the cloud, if it's in their basement infrastructure, they don't care about these things. And I think 
personally, I made a mistake when I said, okay, this is what we're doing, having in mind that we're somehow also contributing to the entire community and so on. They don't care. And I think this is something that I would like to stress out. Mm. The fact that we are competitive on the market, the fact that our services can answer to their requirements in a specific price range, that is what they care about. The open source part, that is our business to take care of. And again, open source is not open is not something that they're very fond of. It doesn't really ring a bell in a positive way, at least for this, for this sector that I've been more involved in. And um, that I've mentioned, uh, that I've mentioned this activity, we have been uh, in contact with United Nations, the environmental program. They have a financial uh, initiative. They're actually trying to, they have a working group, a task working group, uh, which is doing quite an interesting work. They tried to show the financial sector, which is formed of banks, of insurers, of, um, uh, how do you call those people that give you money? <laughs> like uh, the funding, our yes, venture like, capital? Yes, the, the investors, exactly. Okay. They tried to show them that climate change affects their business in numbers, because this is what these people actually look at, numbers, yeah. not maps or something else. And we've been in contact with them, presenting what we've done in this, uh, in this initiative that we're having, and they said, okay, we will, it's a good, it's, we had a presentation, blah, blah, and then we said, okay, we will send you this very long sheet of information that you need to fill in with mm. respect to what your tool does, and then we will include this information together with all the other tools that are open source or not, or proprietary or whatever, for these companies that work in this completely different domain, if they would ever need something that you can provide, then they will find you through our search indexes. And filling all those tens of questions, I ended up with a question. I don't have the, I don't have the, I showed it to you. Okay. I don't have the print screen here, but I will show that at my presentation tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. Um, so I got a question from United Nations saying, that, is your tool open source? The second one was, is your tool commercially available? And I could have picked only one. This actually told me we were open source, but we were definitely commercial. So that actually showed me that in the world that is bigger than our community here, exactly as you, Atina, were saying, again, open source is not necessarily seen as commercial, which it is. I mean, five days a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. I think uh, you're yeah, right next. Uh, thank you, Katarina. And, and I, I, I hear you. I mean, uh, when we were saying that yesterday, is how we are communicating externally. Here, we are all convinced. I mean, we are all here in Phosphor G, so here we do not, don't need to be convinced. Outside is how we are communicating, giving this narrative about open source, because it's the philosophy. Companies, they don't care about philosophies many times. They care about how much money they are saving and how much money they will be making. So that's the two keys. And philosophy is important, of course, but then they will see that the part economical first, and then they will see some other points. So I think we are communicating in a way that we need to be also saying that open source is commercial. So anyway, uh, the third question uh, that I have for you, and uh, Matias, you will be the first in answering, will be, uh, okay, here we are a bunch of people, also we want to understand how we can communicate this narrative externally. Also people who will be uh, seeing the recording will be watching this, and then uh, how can we uh, advise to all these people here uh, attending the panel uh, when they hear open source it's just for organizations who can't afford the license. What would be the advice of the message that we should be sharing with these people that they don't know? Tough question, <laughs> I must say. Um, but basically, first we should ask ourselves, if we hear that statement, which was, where was it? Open yeah. source is just for organizations who cannot afford to pay proprietary licenses. That kind of suggests that there is a correlation between a price and quality. And that's a base assumption we put into that statement, which I would ask everyone in here to think about that. Also, vice versa, if you don't pay for something, 
has it no value at all? I think we all know. Okay. So um, <laughs> in, in, in any case, I think that's, that's what it boils down to. Um, in the end, for us and for many people in here who understand how this works, uh, in the end, we are standing on the shoulders of giants by using open source tools that have been developed over years and decades, or soon decades, but yes, I guess it, they are actually. Um, and yeah, so I think I don't have anything to add. <laughs> okay, Karina? Yeah. I was hoping Ariel would be first, <laughs> so I can think about, <laughs> about it more. But um, I, definitely, I definitely agree with you, because this is a bit um, implying that if it's proprietary, it's super quality, which sometimes it is, sometimes it, it's, it's not. I think this comes from the, the early ages of open source when open source was still uh, done only as a hobby. And it's one of those uh, myths that, uh, you know, uh, are pure and simple, not true. And I think that um, the reality is that no matter under what license the software is released, you just need to test it. I mean, don't put the fact that it's proprietary or open source, the type of license in front. Just test and see if it responds to your requirements. And then you can think about, uh, you can think about other, other characteristics. But um, open source is mature. Uh, in the geospatial world without a without a doubt and not only it's mature you can I there is no at least from my my experience until now there is no stage of uh, processing of visualization of servicing uh, that you cannot you for which you cannot use an open source solution in an operational way I mean simply <laughs> thank you <laughs> Take the rest of my three minutes that I didn't use before. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. no. Um, I think one of the one of the important advices and and general uh, recommendations for uh, us, I would say, is let's shift the focus away from the price tag because that's a lot of what I see is free as in free beer, open source is cheaper, whatever. And it's even used by open source proponents as an argument to convince people to switch to open source. And I'm not sure we're doing ourselves a favor by putting that argument first. We all should be proud of the, what we've reached, what we've developed, and what we've done in terms of quality and in terms of things uh, and the added value that we can offer to everyone. And we've, if we, we are able to put the focus much more on that, and I really hope in 10 years it's much more like, whoa, cool, with open source, I will pay the, I will pay the same as with proprietary, but I will get much more exactly what I need, much rather than with open source, I'm free, <laughs> free as in beer. I did. It's good, it's good. We have time. Anytime. I think. I think the message, the um, has some open source can be the basic for commercial solution, for sustainable solution over time. Thinking about closing solution, we may come on for free, but two, three years unless they start to be a very high cost, moving, for example, in the USGN, or implementation the, for UM, for country, and is now is in closing software, in the open source, uh, in, for, for example, in Latin America. As happened to us in South Project across uh, Latin America to integrate and provide each of the software, uh, begin use speciality community-based software. And summary, open source solution, those based on open source are not just about listen calls, but is a uh, opportunity for the solution to be robust and sustainable over time. Thank you. <laughs> no way. Uh, 
So I think, I mean, we have here a lot of uh, very good comments, I mean, coming from each of the participants because each of them, they have experiences with different organizations, different uh, public and private uh, deals that they have signed over the years. And I would say kind of the main message is that uh, doesn't matter if it's open source or not. I mean, how is really like actually completing the needs that the client is requesting. So you say very clearly that, I mean, that it has been kind of even contra productive, I mean, to say sometimes it's like open source. So I think that's a really like good, good point that you were suggesting. So before we go to the questions from the audience, I would like to ask uh, each of the participants to share one phrase uh, with the one you would like to close your participation in this panel. So one phrase, if I were to, or one takeaway, uh, just, you know, j just answer the requirements. Nobody says this is, we answer this requirements with proprietary software. Don't say you're answering with open source software. You're answering the requirements with this solution. This is, I would say, my, my takeaway. Again, with the hat uh, from the, all the negotiations with the insurance and reinsurance people. Mm -hmm. and so that would be my, that would be my takeaway. I think that we, uh, we have a tendency of being, you know, like in a closer collaboration, the open source world in which we all work and active, um, actively meeting and so on makes us proud of the way that we develop what we develop. And uh, we want to say that out loud, but I'm just saying that it is possible. I'm not saying that it will always happen, but it is possible that at some point this might not turn out to be like one of the biggest advantages. The biggest advantages is that our software you know, is competitive, is fully operational, it answers requirements. If they want to know about the license, they will ask. You just offer it with the, the maintenance contract and then that is it. <laughs> Thank you, Kodrin. Ariel? Mm, I'm, I'm reading. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my idea. Uh, don't don't be afraid of challenges. Uh, open source can be foundation for development and key of business and true contribution to the grounds of community solution. Open source uh, is uh, all functional and commercial solution for any user and um, facility for integration. Uh, I think this very, very important thing, uh, the no comparison uh, for open source con un, one solution for testing, no? It's the production, is the evolution, um, very, very robust. I get it. Matias. Well, I could repeat what both, both of you said, so <laughs> I'll, I'll just put the stress on a completely different thing. And um, I think we all in here, many in here, probably like some geography background, uh, some uh, natural science background. And what we really like in that domain is to understand things, to understand how things work from the beginning to the end. That's what we invest our days into. And um, that's one of the big advantages of open source software, I think, is that you can just look deeper. So many times, um, I had the challenge, whatever, things did not work as expected, and I could really look into what is down there, um, and that helped me in the end also to solve a problem um, in an appropriate way, and not just by working around it, and that's um, one of the wonderful things about, um, yeah, about open source, um, is, is that you have the possibility to understand what's inside and to look deeper, and um, yeah, that's something that they cannot take away from us. Thank you, Matias. All right, so I think we're going to be opening right now the floor for questions. We have still some minutes. Okay. Uh, Javier, and then yeah. And also, if you want to ask anyone in particular, or it's fine. Yeah, so thank you very much. This question is more general. Many years ago, I used to work in a big corporation, and when we suggested to use open source software, the answer is, I don't care. What I care is this maintenance. So I sign a contract, I pay money, but I want to be sure that in less than 24 hours, this will be fixed. And 
Sometimes we have services like that, but many times we don't. So we make great products, but we cannot do that. And we don't want to, I don't want to do that at least. But these big companies, they want to know, I just want to re reduce my risk. If there's any problem, I pay you a lot of money during the last years and you will fix it. Okay. Who wants to answer the question? I hope I understood correctly. Uh, so uh, you're, you're talking about the fastness of um, solving an issue when it occurs. Well, this is one of actually one of the beauty of our uh, mature state. I mean, in the open source for geospatial world, you have a lot of companies that can serve if you have a problem. And this is, it's exactly like in the proprietary world, let's say, if you want this kind of availability from a top programmer, a top coder, then you pay for that. And that happens in the proprietary world as well. You have different types of licenses. I, and I think this is actually, the question actually shows, uh, or at least I'm trying to, to say into, into my answer, that if you look around, any kind of, uh, of project at this time is served by different companies that have expertise in responding to your requirements. So I think we have that at this point and uh, we just presented exactly like that if you want this kind of maintenance you pay for it especially if you're a big corporation because that means that you can afford that kind of a, a response time i hope i answered the question okay we have time we have three minutes we have time for maybe two really quick questions Really quick. So just as a follow-up to that, is, you know, the advantage of open source is you've got competition in maintenance companies. Certainly for GeoServer, there's three different, four different companies you can get competitive bids from. You go to Esri, you get Esri's bid. Um, but going back to sort of the general open source, when I was working in the, the, you know, the commercial sector, the local councils didn't care about anything except the cost of the software. That was their sole criteria. They could not afford to buy expensive software. Now I've gone back into the academic sector. Papers get rejected if I can't reproduce that workflow and see that it worked correctly. So if it's not produced with open source software, it's not going to get published any longer. And that's where open source gets, gets taken up. But what was the question? There wasn't really a question. Statement. Ah, Statement. okay, okay, okay. There, there had yeah. been a question, but it was <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Well, so, I, would, I would like to, yeah. to, to actually pick up one of, one of the points you did, like uh, with open source uh, companies for maintenance and development services, whatever, you normally have a competition. So like for us, yeah. this also means that we have to deliver some kind of service to make our clients happy, because if they are not happy, they can switch to someone else. On the other hand, and that's, that's like a vendor lock-in, I think is really a good argument in favor of open source software. If you are at the mercy of a company that is the only one to be able to respond to your requirements, that also means that they have the complete liberty to increase your license prices as much as they like. And you're, you cannot do much about that. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, so before we go to the last questions, thanks so much for your participation. And I think this is the beginning of a further conversation. I mean, we don't want to solve this in this panel right here, but I want to everyone to have a, a seat in their heads about what else can be done to the community work, I mean, to communicate this narrative externally to the people you are speaking with in different forums, in different events, in different deals or contracts. So. Just planting the seeds right there to continue this conversation, even in the coffee outside of this room. So, last question. Yes, uh, why uh, open source go slow compared to closed source? Uh, it goes and, and my, slow. My, I'll, I'll give just my, my idea. I am a Jewish specialist. Uh, I am from Saudi Arabia. And uh, two years I've been involved with the uh, open source uh, community internationally, either Asia or Europe. But I, I think if I say, if you want, take it, or if you don't want, don't. I think the developer of open source, they make it harder, more than uh, the, the closed source. It's gone very slow now compared to the closed source. Even people like it, 
There is no good marketing. People like it very much internationally, and people need it, you know. Okay, anyone? Uh, Sabrina, maybe. No? No? No, no, no. Um, okay, so um, basically, I don't know if we can say that open source uh, goes slower. I would, I would uh, put that to question. Um, we've seen uh, in some some of the projects we work on uh, that we had uh, quite a lot of uh, time pressure as well involved um, with bigger clients that we were able to uh, respond in, in, in quite a short time to specific needs by taking pieces that are around and applying them to, to their use cases and that uh, led to very happy clients. So basically, I, I think there is, there is a difference between observing open source and waiting for things to happen and deciding to specify your requirements and asking someone to implement for you. And if you go for the second choice, that means obviously you will pay for something clearly for, for the development, but that also means that, that you, can, you can move quite fast. So I would actually say that with open source, you can maybe even move faster. I don't know if I can really say that like that, maybe it's uh, on par, but uh, at least I would say that um, if someone has the development power internally or the, the financial power or some other way of power to make people um, develop a product, then open source is definitely competitive as Codrino has put it before. Thank you, Matias. Uh, thanks for your questions. And thanks so much, Codrina, Ariel, Matias, for participation. And we have time for I, just a statement. So I agree with everything you said. And okay. I came across uh, some comments uh, the last two days, like, oh, commercial software versus, versus open source software. No, open source software is also commercial. And exactly. we do not a favor for ourselves if we put up this comparison. Closed source, open source, proprietary yeah. software, free software. Leave the commercial out and uh, then focus on the requirements. But that is... Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, a round of applause for the... And, and also for Miriam to putting together the panel. And you were, was, you were a fantastic...